Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Academy by Yad and welcome to every Tuesday the What Would You Do? Our treatment plan seminar and our scientific review and updates. So here we are with all the team today. It's uh, uh, my time to present and I'm very, very happy to present this case that was uh, uh, treated by the whole team. My name is Jean Borges. Uh, I'm uh, head of the prosthetic department here at uh, Yad Lisbon and uh, this is how we did and treat this case. So we presented the case first on Instagram and um, you can find this out still today uh, on uh, the Academy by Yad Instagram page, the stories. You will find the case with the orthopantomography and um, so it's a 46 year old female uh, with aesthetic and functional demands uh, of course no medical condition to really important uh, low lip line in full smile and uh, the patient was searching for a long lasting result so in 18 minutes I will try to summarize exactly what happened and uh, how we planned the case but mostly how did we get the strategy right for this case in our opinion. So the three uh, options that we had for you were uh, implants on the upper anterior region and lower posterior regions, uh, full mouth beam maxillary with implants or no implants, keep the teeth. And the results were quite interesting. So we had 66% on the first option, but no implants, keep the teeth came second. So um, let's try to understand why in a long-lasting approach uh, we believe that the option should be a little bit different. So, of course, again, we always present our team. There's no way that this, ca this case uh, can have a long-lasting result without all the team, especially the oral hygienist team, Pedro and Rui, that, of course, will manage the case throughout the years. And uh, for this specific case, there was something that was really, really interesting. was the fact that the patient had uh, heard different opinions. I, I think she had like uh, five, six opinions before ours. And uh, something that was really, really worrying this patient, the 46-year-old female, don't forget the age is always, always very important, was people wanted to extract a lot of teeth. And for her, this was already uh, uh, a really, really difficult situation to have. Uh, that, of course, she didn't want to go in a direction that eventually would make her lose all her dentition. So we uh, tried first to get all the information that we needed so that we could start a conversation with the team and then a conversation with the patient. Uh, here, when we take this photograph, it's very important to understand that we have a low lip line, but mostly we have a loss of vertical dimension. And what worries us as prosthodontists, of course, is the loss of vertical dimension and how will we address the case. But not only was the loss of vertical dimension important, because, of course, the low lip line is very manageable, not very, very important, but most of all was the lack of prosthetic space that we had. And the lack of prosthetic space for any, any case that you might treat is one of your first worries. And in our opinion, in this specific case, is the first thing that we need to address. Because the deep bite was, uh, of course, uh, very, is ve very visible in both photographs, lateral photographs, okay? But the deep bite and the lack of posterior support got these incisors to flare, okay? So in all anterior teeth, we had not only deep pockets, but as well loss of insertion. Uh, which in fact was very different from this one, this premolar, that you can check on the x-ray. 
uh, that we have a deep pocket, but due to a traumatic occlusion that was mainly focused in this, uh, on this uh, tooth. So we had occlusal trauma. As you can understand here, the situation is very, very unbalanced, very uncontrolled. So in our perspective as a team, we address these cases in this uh, sequence. First, we check and we control the biological problems. Second, we try to manage the most we can and quickly the biomechanical issues and try to balance the most we can. And then we finish with the aesthetic because the aesthetic is honestly very, very easy to achieve. It's something that is mostly in relation with the laboratory. So this was a worry. So as we first started the conversation, and this was a discussion that I had initially with Andre, Andre Shen from the surgical department, when we start the conversation with the patient, we honestly said, well, we don't feel that you need to extract all these teeth. Because this was one of the assumptions. We have something that you need to understand, which is there is an anteroposterior issue that eventually would be better or ideally treated with maxillofacial surgery. So that we can, in the lateral view and anterior posterior positioning of the maxillaries, uh, maxillaries go into an ideal situation. But what the patient was searching for was a solution that addressed her problem and her expectations, but not in a very, very um, complicated way surgically. So she absolutely denied the option of maxillofacial surgery. So we had this, as you can see. We had deep pockets, mobility in the front incisor, in, in the upper incisors, the canine, loss of insertion, and here we had a deep pocket, but mainly due to traumatic issue of the, the, with, with the lower uh, premolar. Fortunately, still, we have the wisdom teeth in the back that could work as stops in the intermediate phase of this case, okay? So, we were like thinking a little bit <laughs> as a team, like blah, 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 uh, and try to get the steps right. Because something that is really important for us is to say to a patient, well, you start here, you stop there. Because immediacy, as we always say in our courses, immediacy is not placing the immediate teeth in the moment of surgery. No, immediacy is the moment the patient enters and finishes the work and starts with the oral hygiene uh, maintenance protocol. So again, in this step one, we decided that the first thing that we had to do was to place three implants uh, on the third quadrant and three implants on the fourth quadrant, uh, five, six, and seven, each side, keeping the wisdom teeth as a blockage, okay? And no provisional bridge over them. Stage one was kept by the oral hygiene, so maintenance was really important to address uh, periodontal tr treatment and protocol and prepare the upper jaw for surgery. So after two months, we decided to rehabilitate the lower jaw. And this was, in fact, what we call the first rise of vertical dimension and posterior support. This was really, really important so that we could do an immediate function on the upper jaw and the anterior area. Because without that, we would have, as you saw in the beginning, the lack of posterior space. And with this, of course, um, very unstable situation in terms of the immediate uh, uh, bridge, okay? So this was two months after the implant placement. We um, addressed the case using all the portfolio of uh, Stroman. Uh, as you can see here, on the second premolars, 
we have um, uh, decided to use a BLX implant, whereas in the uh, position of the molars, six and seven, we use tissue level on the third quadrant and tissue level X, a TLX, on the fourth quadrant. So there's all the portfolio really, really managing and adapting each implant to the need of the case and to the actual situation. So here, the biological space would be given by the polished color of the TLX and the tissue level, whereas for the contour of the premolar, we would use the BLX, okay? So, as this was done, and we had the provisionals into place, we addressed the upper anterior implants with immediacy. So we started the planning. We started the planning and we started with the design of and the recontouring of the anterior region. We did many designs and what we really, really like about these designs is the way we approach the case with the laboratory and with Mariana, uh, our digital expert, in the sense that when she has to fabricate the surgical guide, she is doing it in a prosthetically driven way. And I think this is also what makes us have better communication with the patient because before the surgery, we call the patient, we show the patient what is to be expected, which in fact just comes directly linked to our first conversation, which was in fact that we will have contact over the canines, but the incisors won't have any contact due, of course, to the anterior posterior relationship, okay? So here you can see the real compensation, closing the arch and trying to blocking it as you can see as well here, we have already prosthetic space. It's very clear that there's no traumatic uh, occlusion over this premolar. We have rise two millimeters and this has to be done step by step, okay? Of course, we have a patient that has been having a loss of vertical dimension and cannot go to a higher vertical dimension. Uh, or get back to her vertical dimension without a step-by-step -step procedure. So this is um, the co-diagnostic look of the um, provisional of the natural teeth of the, the, um, the uh, anchor, it's not called anchor pins, it's called anchor pins, sorry, anchor pins, so it's right. <laughs> the anchor pins of the surgical guide and in fact exactly where the implant should be placed prosthetically driven way. So uh, here a little bit of uh, how do we uh, segment the cases uh, and how do we get uh, this done. So we have all the views and um, the first thing that we do is of course take uh, separate the anterior from the posterior so that we can really then uh, address uh, the case and separate teeth from the jaws. Um, and this, of course, is a work that is done by our digital expert, uh, Mariana. Um, mostly now uh, the code diagnosis has evolved a lot um, using artificial intelligence, which pff, makes it so, so easy now to get it done very, very quickly uh, because segmentation sometimes, it's true, it's quite hard. Um, so this was uh, an example of how we do and how we manage the case. So, as you can see here, we have provisional. Provisional here as well. And these areas are still to be rehabilitated. So, as we get to this point, how many months have passed? This is a question that you might have. We have two months of healing period for the lower, and we have the provisional already in, in place, and starts two months of healing of the upper. So after four months, the case is done for final rehabilitation. 
And what's the big challenge here? As you can see, we have already uh, uh, gotten into a step up of the case. But the plan is not correct. There's still a deviation. And of course, as you could see in the segmented area and the previous videos, there's still a lack of uh, great relationship anteriorly. So in our understanding, this is not enough. And this is what we said to the patient. Of course, this is enough to place teeth in <laughs> void space, but this is not rehabilitation. And rehabilitation needs all the anterior support to be adapted to the posterior support. Okay? And this is very important because this means that a case like this has three phases. And the final phase is a phase that can start even before this one is fully integrated. So after three months since the start of the, 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 the placement of the lower implants, we finished the lower jaw. Because we wanted the lower jaw to be our guide and our lighthouse to how would I get the ideal positioning of the upper jaw. Um, and so not only we finish this lower jaw as we just rehabilitated the teeth that we could eventually and immediately rehabilitate it. So as I said, we had at that moment an incorrect lower plan. We still had overbite and overjet and the aesthetic was, was not right. So the patient was very happy, but we were still far away from the final result that we wanted. And in our opinion, when we kick off a case like this one, we really have to look further and try to get the patient to understand that there will be different phases and each phase will bring up the step medically needed and aesthetically needed. So here we are. We reach to this phase and we go to a fully digital protocol. So as you cannot, could understand so far, the first thing we do to the patient is transform the patient into a digital patient to work on the communication between all the teams. Then we go for uh, mix digital and analog uh, uh, clinical situation on the surgical uh, arena for the lower implant placement. Then we go again with the digital protocol for provisionals and for the anterior implant placement and we finish full digital. So this arch with this configuration can be easily managed with a full digital workflow. Having four implants, four uh, eight teeth, already with the veneer lays on premolar and first molar, and premolar, first molar, both second molar and wisdom teeth were not treated because we didn't need to, okay? And this is the volume that we achieved and the the, um, the contour and the projection of the anterior teeth that we managed. Here we are, and so we finish like this. From start to finish, what have we managed? We manage stability biomechanical, uh, general health, uh, oral health with biological, uh, part addressed very, very in detail by the oral hygiene department in the first two, three months and continuously, of course. We have canine guidance. We have no contacts in the incisors because this was the, the cons of uh, addressing a case like this and not correcting the anterior posterior relationship of the max layers, of course. But we have posterior stability. And what we can get here, uh, what you can see, and of course, we finished with the endodontical treatment uh, of both these incisors by Dr. Teresa Kazaka, also present here. 
as you can see here by the x-ray, we have leveled the plan. We have veneer lays on premolars, veneers on the interiors, and bridge on the posterior region. Of course, as I said, veneer lays on the, uh, both second molars and first molar, and then finishing with SRA uh, uh, abutments and uh, full zirconia. This is a case that uh, finished, we finished uh, more than six months ago. We've been following the case, and the case is very, very stable. The patient, honestly, is very, very happy. But most of all, what really, really is the reason why we've chosen this case to share with you is to make you understand that there is not a very closed and single solution to the cases and the imagination just grows when you talk as a team. Uh, if you have your, only, your, your own, own opinion, sometimes it's not sufficient and the solutions sometimes come with surgery, sometimes come with uh, uh, oral hygiene that says you can keep this tooth, you cannot keep this one. And of course, we keep teeth as well with endodontic treatment. I think this again is what Yad Lisman is all about and what we really, really want to share with you guys there. So we're open to any question and we're very, very happy to present this case. Thank you so much. Thank you.